Philosophy of Hinduism by Baba Sahib Ambedkar Introduction Philosophy of Hinduism 1. Part 8 The second point of difference between antique and modern society relates to the bond between God and society. In the antique world, the various communities believed in the existence of many gods, for they accept, accepted as real the gods of their enemies as well as their own, but they did not worship the strange gods from whom they had no favour to expect, and on whom their gifts and offerings would have been thrown away. Each group had its own god, or perhaps a god and goddess, to whom the other gods bore no relation whatsoever. The god of the antique society was an exclusive god. God was owned by and bound to one single community. This is largely to be accounted for by the share taken by the gods in the feuds and wars of their worshippers. The enemies of the god, the enemies of his people, are identical. Even in the Old Testament, the enemies of Jehovah are originally nothing else than the enemies of Israel. In battle, each god fights for his own people, and to aid his success is ascribed. Chemosh gives victory to Moab and Asher to Assyria and often the divine image or symbol accompanies the host to battle. When the ark was brought into the camp of Israel, the Philistines said, God are come into the camp, who can deliver us from their own practice, for when David defeated them at Baal Perizirim, part of the booty consisted in their idols, which had been carried into the field. When the Carthaginians, in their treaty with Philip of Macedon, speak of the gods that take part in the campaign, they doubtlessly refer to the inmates of the sacred tent which was pitched in time of war besides the tent of the sacred and of the general, and before which prisoners were sacrificed after a victory. Similarly, an Arabic poet says, Yagut went forth with us against Murad. That is, the image of the god Yagut was carried into the fray. This fact had produced a solidarity between God and the community. Hence, on the principle of solidarity between gods and their worshippers, the particularism characteristic of political society could not but reappear in the sphere of religion. In the same measure as the god of a clan or town had indisputable claim to the reverence and service of the community to which he belonged, he was necessarily an enemy to their enemies and a stranger to those who were strangers. God had become attached to a community and the community had become attached to their god. God had become the god of the community, and the community had become the chosen community of the god. This view had two consequences. Antique society never came to conceive that god could be universal god, the god of all. Antique society could never conceive that there were any things such as humanity in general. The End